So when you have a party like the Republican Party, who's basically behind all of this, big surprise, the biggest leaders of the Tea Party in terms of national figures are Sarah Palin, uh, Dick Armey, Sharon Angle, Michelle Bachman. They're all Republican Party hacks. Uh, so it's not surprising. So you have a party like this behind a, a quote-unquote movement, and you're going to get a ton of coverage, and that's exactly what happened. If you have an actual social movement on the left, and it falls outside of the bipartisan sphere of ideology and what goes on between Democrats and Republicans, you're going to have a really hard time. How much attention was there to these recent Chicago school protests of these layoffs? Thousands of people showed up in the city and in Springfield to protest. Uh, thousands, much more, than showed up for this Chicago Tea Party rally, which was 2,000 or less. It got a fraction of the coverage. I, I looked at all of the numbers very closely for the Daily Herald and the Sun-Times. Uh, so if you have a party that's willing to get behind something, then you can get some sustained attention. And that's where I think the people on the left kind of failed. We had a very strong impetus for the beginnings of a social movement in 2002-3 with the anti-war movement. Uh, and it wasn't sustained in the long term. There were still hundreds of thousands of people showing up by 2005, but by 2007 that was effectively dead. I went to a, a, a march in Washington in 07, September, and there was 30,000 people there. How do you go from a quarter to half a million people in 2003 to 30,000. Uh, there's not enough sustainability in terms of organization and not enough effectiveness in terms of forcing the other party, the other corporate party, the Democratic Party, to actually pay attention and make this into a major issue. There was some progress. You actually heard some talk about timelines for withdrawal by 2005 to 07 by Democrats. Some sort of lip service and some sort of limited discussion. We just needed to do a lot more. And I think that's the big thing when you talk about left social movements. First of all, you have to have more sustainability over a, a longer period of time. And you need to actually be effective to some degree in the electoral arena at the end. When all is said and done, you can't just show up for a rally and have some sort of limited organization locally. If you don't sustain it and you don't have some sort of major influence on electoral politics, then you're probably not going to see a real breakthrough. I hope that answers the, the question. Yes, um, I've got some comments not necessarily relevant. Uh, empires, we're in an empire, and empires need enemies more than they need friends. And this is nothing new or a secret. You can look at it. You don't have to go to college to learn this. You can look it up in a, a novel of 50 years ago called 1984, where they, they, they very, very purposely had uh, uh, enemy POWs in the streets, and then one day the uh, enemy changed. and. They changed the uniforms, but they had the same actors uh, going through the streets who, who were the necessary enemy. And uh, I, I spend all my time with, with Muslims, all, all my free time when I'm not here. And I uh, don't do it because I love them or love their uh, theology. I do it because I worship food. And uh, this is the, great, the greatest time of year, Ramadan. They uh, fast all day during the day, and at, at sundown, they feast like demons. And uh, that's, that's where I come in, and, and that's why I spend my time with them. And I'd like to give you a little little window in, into some of the uh, some of the dispatches from the trenches uh, among the Muslims. Uh, there's a, there's a joke that goes around American Muslims. It's actually an urban legend, but they they, they, they say it as a joke where a black man's in a, this is right after 9/11. Black man's in the back of a cab, Muslims driving, and the black guy says, "Hey, you know this 9/11 is really great. We're not the niggers anymore. You're the new niggers. You're them." And as if this urban legend slash, slash joke is not enough coming out of the Muslims, you can see it, there's a cartoon called Boondocks, which involves a young man who's a black radical, and he's watching television right after 9-11. The announcer says that uh, they've taken a recent poll, and this poll is really good for black people, because the, the most feared group in America is no longer black people, number one are Muslims from the Middle East, Middle Eastern men, and number two are South Asians who look like Middle Eastern men, and black men have fallen to number three, so this is a, this is a cause for celebration. Uh, I want to say a little bit about Ground Zero that you didn't bring up, uh, some little known facts that many people in, in this room know. Uh, it's referred to often as hallowed ground, this spot two, two blocks from, from Ground Zero. And, and it's hallowed ground, it's really close to ground zero. Of course, there happens to be an off-track betting parlor and an adult bookstore and a strip club that are closer than this uh, proposed mosque, but it's 
it's going a hallowed ground, and that's a big problem. I want to say one last thing, again, coming from uh, the trenches of uh, hanging out with Muslims. I can't tell you how many Pakistanis have come up to me and looked me in the eye and said, don't you Americans realize we come in peace? And I start thinking about this phrase, we come in peace. Where, you know, this phrase is like very vaguely familiar. And I got online, I tried to figure out where it came from. Originally, this phrase came from a movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still. <laughs> and so we have, even in the Muslim community, they don't even know. But Muslims aren't just, you know, as scary as black people, but now they're from outer space. And uh, that's, that's really all I wanted to, I mean, I have much more to say, but uh, I rattle on and this, this isn't terribly uh, relevant. But I wanted to, to let you know that uh, nobody, I, I, I tell the Muslims when they say we come in peace, I say, yeah, nobody goes through all the bullshit of immigrating to America to, to cause trouble, to change the political system, uh, no, ma no matter what may be advertised outside America or in America. So. That's, that's what I have to say from personal experience. So. And uh, tonight I'm going to be uh, peeking out with the Muslims. <laughs> Thanks for pointing out the, the bogus hallowed ground argument, too. See me after. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very hallowed, but it the strip club stuff. The off-track then probably would be Right. So you would be, I think, uh, a classic example of how actually spending time with people who are of a Muslim background, you can you know actually know something about people of a religious faith by, by doing that. And actually, it's well, well, actually, if you'll pardon me, I, I do have one last tiny thing to say. A friend told me last night that uh, she said it was a state law, but I think it's more a resolution that in Oklahoma they have outlawed the practice of Sharia law in Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, I, I've been sleeping an awful lot better since uh, she told me this. But today when I was thinking about it, I guess that it, uh, it, they, they feel about Sharia law like they do about crack cocaine. That they're afraid if they get a little bit of it, they're going to like it so much that they're not going to be able to stop. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing about the Sharia law comment, and this is a favorite of Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh and others. Sharia means law. We talk about Islamic or you know, Islamist law. So it's like, an Amer it's like if you pass yourself off as a, an expert on American legal system and you talk about American law law. That's about the equivalent. So, you know, when you hear those comments, uh, you know, it really is the case that uh, kind of the more ignorant you are, the higher on the pedestal you get when you talk about Fox News and, and right wing radio, the more incendiary you can become. Glenn Beck is a classic example of this. It doesn't, you don't have to know what you're talking about. So, uh, Rush Limbaugh had made this point the other day. I, I was listening to it. I don't know why. Uh, I like pain sometimes. But he said, you know, the New Deal is inherently Marxist Leninist. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, the New Deal, FDR, Marxist, Leninist state, which is the most idiotic thing. Anybody who's read the Communist Manifesto knows anything about Marxism. Not sure. It's an insane comment, but, you know, it passes for fact and a knowledgeable opinion from amongst ditto heads who listen to, to Rush Limbaugh. My comment concerns the uh, culture of apathy, particularly involving uh, younger people. It seems to me that uh, people on the left so-called left, when they uh, f feed into the dichotomy of uh, good Democrats versus bad Republicans, uh, th that uh, basically they're enhancing the, the cynicism of young people who can see that the talk of somebody like, uh, like Obama about change was just so much nonsense. Here we have somebody who's gone along with the hugest military spending in history invading another country, Afghanistan. Uh, uh, what meek promises he made about getting out of Iraq, he's broken. Uh, the support for Israel's atrocities recently, just incredible. The uh, watered down health legislation he proposed and was more than happy for settling for much less. Um, and I, I think people on, on the left who I, I can understand the need sometimes to uh, vote for the lesser of evils to avoid uh, um, the worst case scenario. Uh, nevertheless, it seems, you know, that we do have something, I think it's even more than a, a creeping fascism. Uh, some people use the term proto-fascism or crypto-fascism, whatnot. But basically, when you look at it, the PR and advertising are the same.